buffer. Well, it's too bad because we're already. Oh, we're not. We're not buffing. We, no, we already did that. Oh, we already. We done buffed. We, we're buffed. Well, uh, hello everyone, and welcome to uh, this month's episode of the Magic Box. That's even a bold amount. Of episode. Um. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's difficult these days because. I am very far away from where Eck is, and Eck is very far away from where the usual cube is. So. It's true. I've never been this far away from the cube in my whole life. Yeah, it's weird. There is definitely some detachment feelings yeah. issues. Yeah. It's, gonna it's be like I don't even know what the cube is anymore. I when I re-sleeve it in blue, it's going to be, uh, <coughs> hey, Evil KYT, also uh, Jackie Chan. I believe that is the same person. I think so. Is that racist? Uh, it's a long story. Okay. We covered it in some other podcasts. Long racist, sir. Uh, thanks for already stopping by. For those of you that are not familiar with our program, uh, we are in the Magic Box. We talk about Cube, kind of our Cube, kind of Cube in general. Although at this point, I think if you're not familiar with the show, you're not watching. Uh, it's, it's possible people will, will randomly wander in, as well as uh, definitely some, some, uh, some, some heavy meta crossovers, since we've done a lot on that show recently talking about Cube. You may be a first-time listener. You may be a first-time viewer. You may be a what the F am I doing here. Um, regardless, Eck and I, long-time magicians. Yes. Magical assistants. We demand to be taken seriously. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, go back in our archives, check it out. Glad for everyone here today. Real briefly, we are going to uh, cover some changes I made. I'm going to take this under my wing. I made solely with no outside... In- uh, input. Well, there was a little bit of debate, but I ended up vetoing most of what Eck was saying. I was going to say, yeah, you opened the suggestion box and then threw it in the incinerator. <laughs> Not entirely. I feel like some of your feedback made it to what got changed. Uh, yeah, exactly. That is exactly. And those of you, again, listening to this after the fact, you may have picked it up at ekamon.blogspot.com. You may have picked it up on iTunes somehow, or you have an RSS feed that still picks up our broadcast. So for you guys listening after the fact, I apologize for every time I'm talking at the chat and not you. It's not personal. I love you, and I'm glad you guys are still listening. But they're live and you're not, so... It's tough, especially for our newer viewers that don't know what... It's hard for me to hold a conversation with people who are listening to this in three weeks from now. And I feel like that's part of the charm of our show, is that uh, you're listening, hopefully you're getting something out of it, and at the same time... uh, I was just told that Eck went live, so hey, it's know. useful ah, information. Useful, yeah. uh, that is relevant. So we usually kick off the show with uh, some draft scenarios as we are coming off of a heavy sports day. Uh, Eck is a man with iron balls. That is the only part of that that I have read. That's all right. I also hope that the new microphone set up isn't awful, but also picks up all of X typing, because I think that adds to the authenticity. Of the yeah, show. yeah. It's very underground. It's a gritty, it's a gritty so, show. So, so to get back, uh, a lot of heavy sports ball today, so we did not get to make uh, the most crafted draft scenario. Just by the fact, we have literally six weeks between shows. We have not done any prep. But, giving away all the secrets. We can do some drafts anyway, so let's look at our first pack. Thank you. Thank you once again to Cube Junior for making this whole process extraordinarily easy. Unpaid, unpaid plug. Yeah. No, no. So, pack one, pick one. Fifteen cards are Rocky Tar Pit, Prismatic Lens, Brixian Processor, Day of Judgment, Treachery, Boon Seder, Glenelendra Archmage, Devil's Play, Impulse, Acroma's Vengeance, Steam Vents, Sudden Death. Increasing Devotion, Ultimate Price, Mana Barbs? What do you like here and why? I want to say it's an easy treachery. Um, if it isn't an easy treachery... I feel like the only reason you're not taking treachery is because you don't want to play that deck. Which is odd, because then you'd be taking, like, Glenlord or Archmage, because that card is awesome. And then you'd be Right, playing. like, there are multiple cards, like, even Impulse, Rat the Rats. Like, there are multiple things that are very good for, like, Blue X control here. I yeah. mean, you can even make an argument for Processor. It's likely that if you take the treasury, also you're going to get something back useful to that deck. I mean, you probably won't see Steam Vents, you probably won't see Arc Mage, but the other ones are a lot more open. Impulse does seem to table for some weird reason, which I'm not entirely sure why. I mean, it's not, it's a, it's a, it's a plus zero, right? It only replaces itself. So it's not as, it's not like Thirst for Knowledge or, you know, God forbid, Recall or whatever, where you're ending up plus cards, and I think that has, it kind of drives people. 
excuse me, drives people away a little bit. And in any situation where we can take a treachery first pick and be possible to wield an impulse, we're obviously in a very yeah. good spot. I think if you're not, if you're like, I, I want to play, I can't play the food deck. I played it four times in a row. <laughs> I'm, I'm over it. Or if you sit down being like, I'm drafting Aggro Red today. You know, again, you know, Cube is one of those formats where it's not always so clean cut like you have you, to take You this. can really do what you want. It's a, it's a lot, you know. I hate to I hate to harken back to bad formats, but it's a lot like Cold Snap Limited. Wow, that is insulting to a lot of things. Right, but like you could sit down and be like, I want to play the Ripple, uh, the White Black Ripple deck, and like always do it. Interesting. So, anyway, I think if you're not taking Treasury, I think it's Day of Judgment, but I think that's about it. Yeah, I know that a lot of a lot of cubes and a lot of lists that we have, may have done pre- previously, uh, Treachery among the best cards in cube. And this is one of the reasons why we often screen the packs ahead of time so that we actually have some it, debate. It's a bit on the slow side. Instead of having a three-minute conversation. It's okay, because this is fast to put together, we can do a bunch of packs. Yeah, it's true. It's true. I'm just going to refresh the page. We're going to see a new, new 15 right now. Oh, nope. That right. has a piece of power, and it's, that's pretty unexciting. So does that one. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's just talk clear. about that, yeah. We're clear. All right. New 15. Pick one, pack one. Ah, okay. Braids, Cabal Minion, Shrine of Loyal Legions, Warren Power Stone, Phyrexian Revoker, Demonic Tutor, Is It Charm, Confiscate, Evolving Wilds, Survival of the Fittest, Pact of Negation, Banishing Light, Night Veil Spectre, Lightning Strike, Dark Confidant, Squirrel Nest. So, again, I feel like the packs we've got today aren't so much about debates between first picks. But Card number five, top right corner, once again. But like, but possibly an opportunity to talk about... This one has also got a lot more depth, I think. Uh, yes, and it's a good way to talk about the difference between Cube Limited and a lot of the other limited environments you may play in where a pack like this may be confusing to players. Because I think, for you and I, it feels like it's clearly Demonic Tutor? Not necessarily. I okay. think survival is best when you take it first. Because you can build your entire deck around the concept of survivaling, whereas like if you get a survival even late first crap, first pick, but, but into the second, you might have so many picks that you're like, well, this survival is awesome, but it's only really working with like four of my ten cards or whatever, and you you kind of nerf yourself in that way. But if you take survival early, all of a sudden all you're doing for is shooting for one eight seven guys and making. The maximum yeah, you, amount of you value can kind of get like a, a little bit of a toolbox effect with right. survival. You're you're valuing guys like uh, Indrik Stompal or Hayo, and guys with like weird niche effects uh, more, and just creatures in general. I mean, I do like how the chat is a, has a very strong uh, braids agenda because I love braids. Uh, and to go with that, Squirrel Nest is not a one-trick pony. I mean, the card plays well with op- opposition. Obviously, it's good in and against control decks. Uh, it's just a very good limited card in general. I, I think Squirrel Nest is one of those cards that's... It, it might be making a bit of a comeback with the summer of uh, multiplayer product that we had. In, if, uh, if Vin were here, it would be Lightning Strike not close, by the way. Uh, but our, re- is, our resident aggro red player. This is a good pack just to talk about the power of cube. You know, cards like Demonic Tutor and Survival of the Fittest are the cornerstones of what make the powered environments so strong. Uh, yes, I can see where the argument where Survival come in like a, a reusable Demonic Tutor, but Demonic Tutor is going to find you the missing combo piece, the Wrath of God you need I, to I get do, in the game against Control Aggro. I do like that we have the Braid Squirrel Nest, uh, you know, sandwich that you can put together. Yeah. Um, I like, I think Demonic Tutor is obviously the safe pick here in that it's going to get played in most decks, and it's always going to be fine, because at the worst, it's the best card in your deck for two extra mana, which is probably the second best card in your deck. But, you know, if I felt like playing Survival at the, as the moment struck me, sure, I, like I think it's a completely I, I, defensive I like, that, I like that phrasing. Felt like it. In, in yeah. The Let's do one more of these. And hey, Sam, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. This is what uh, happens yeah. when there's not much going on in a week. I think we can talk about this pack, definitely. Uh, oh, wow, yeah, this is a good pack. Uh, Alright, 50 new cards. Sword of Feast and Famine. Xenagos the Reveler. Flames of the Firebrand. Burning of Zinyi. Warleader's Helix. Mana Confluence. Grand Coliseum. Coalition Relic. Gaia's Cradle. Essence Scatter. Batter Skull. Goblin Bombardment, Ultimate Price, Siege Gang Commander, Wicker Bow Elder. That's a pack. 
it's, a good, it's a good one for debate, I feel like. Uh, there are definitely a few very high-powered cards in something like Gaia's Cradle and Batter Skull. Uh, or I guess Swords of Peace and Famine kind of falls in that, that same realm. There's a lot of five-color fixing here. Obviously, uh, Grand Call seems a step behind the other two that are in this pack. Yeah, the fact that there are two multi-lands and a coalition relic, like, that's a lot of fixing. I mean, is that, a, is that a signal to that you can draft five color? Yeah, well, I mean, you get one of them back, probably. Right, I, I would imagine if you I think a, you would reasonably take Relic and expect to get Grand Coliseum back. I agree. Can you, can you make that Grand Coliseum large again? Just, uh, just highlight over it. I, this is apparently all No, no Grand Coliseum. Grand Coliseum. Oh. I had no idea there were, appear to be people that also look like ants. Yeah, that's how big the Coliseum is. I had no idea. It's a scale, it's a scale I've, ne birds. I've never seen the that. The scale part. ant people. Yeah. yeah. It looks like a bunch of ants going into a coliseum. What is this, a coliseum for ants? Um, snap judgment, I'd take Coalition Relic, because you're going to get ramp, and you're going to get fixing. If this was 2011, I would agree with you. Okay, it's not. I know. Um, I've been a long proponent of Coalition Relic being one of the strongest non-power cards in the entire game. Are and we still talking about 2011? No, I'm just saying in general. Oh, okay. I, I've I, been a fan of that card, yeah. But I feel that as time goes on, the amount of five color dirtlery, like the day has kind of passed for it. I, I, I agree completely. I don't think I'm taking it for that reason. No. I, I, I think it's very hard to argue against taking Batter Skull here. I like Cradle in the concept of like, it's a lot like survival where when you take it very early, you know, you can't brick it because you can build your deck around it. Sure. You know, one of the most one of the most fun and very good decks in Cube is like the Mono Green Rafellos Cradle deck with Draka Tree Speaker and all the elves, and you just go straight into Cradle Hope and all like turn four. So we've we've established the power level of cards like Coalition Relic and Batter Skull in this pack. Uh, the other the other talking point I would want to cover is cards that might be traps or or situations to deal with. Now, looking at cards like Gaius Cradle. And I think the, the number one offender being a card like Sword of Feast and Famine is seeing them in situations like this. A lot of players are going to snap them off, thinking that they've they've really got a juicy one there. I mean, Sword is very good. I I Sword is very very powerful. It's one of the I I mean, other than Jeet, it's like one of the best equipments in Q. Green Black Sword specifically. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, the Fire Ice is close, but that's about it. Okay. I don't really count Batter Skull as an equipment. I'm, because, okay. You know. All right. Here's what I mean to say: take those other two artifacts out of this pack, re replace them with two basic lands. Okay. Is taking a card like Cradle or Sword of Feast and Famine here a good idea? Because the power level of those cards are either of them traps to take at this at this juncture. I don't think either of them are traps. Okay. Sword doesn't really commit you in the way that Cradle does. If you want to make use of that Cradle. You're taking it and you're focusing your entire draft around it because guess, of the nature of the card. Sure, I, I guess that it helps that this is the sword that probably functions the best in control decks. Like, let's say that was a sword of fire and ice. That I would still... also function very well in control decks. It draws cards and shocks things. All right, the discard element is usually better like, when you're in a control deck. But, but sure, I'm just saying that from my experience, you know, snapping off a sword very early in a draft can lead to a lot of awkward situations where you have to draft creature decks that want to still play this, you know, five mana sorcery to, to get in there. Let me just say this. There are very few decks that I'm not playing a sort of piece of famine that I have in my pool. Okay. Like, if it's in there, I'm gonna play it, like, nine times out of ten. Yeah, I'm probably, like, eight and a half out of ten. And that's still pretty darn And close. that's a perfectly acceptable place for first pick to be. Yeah. If you're if you're blind playing a card 90% of the time, yeah, that's a good first pick. And true, but those cards, I mean, again, we agree with the chat. They're they're behind Batter Skull and Relic. Yeah. It's, it's more of an opportunity to talk about the power level of a card like Sword, uh, a card like Cradle, what it can really do, when you'd want to take it in the draft process. Yeah. Uh, clearly, these colorless cards here are beating out the five-color fixing lands. They're beating out the red, green, uh, sorcery, planeswalker type cards. Blue Spider says, if I'm not taking Relic or Batter Skull, I'm drafting the Wildfire deck. That is actually a trick question, because if you're taking Coalition Relic, you already want the Wildfire deck, and you might get that burning back. If you want it, you will You will most likely have the option to get it. If you want to play a big red deck after taking a Coalition Relic, I would imagine you're going to have a shot at seeing a Burning, a Flames, a Siege Gang Commander, and or a Xenagos I don't on think, the wheel. I don't know if Flames will come back, but I, Burning usually does. This card is very underrated. For some reason, like, well, it's very difficult. I mean, the wildfires right. are, are are difficult to work with, and either people draft the deck for them, or they think that they don't have any chance of playing them. 
you know, no like white red control deck, blue red control deck is like that's my sweeper of choice because generally those decks are going to want all their lands in play. It's true. So they're they're difficult to evaluate, and thusly you will in all likelihood have an opportunity to see it. it, it, it people is, people are very gun shy about them. I will say that. You want to do one more? I feel like we've killed 15 minutes on this. For people listening after the fact, it's always kind of tough to go through the. I, I feel like, you know, when I go back and re listen, and again, anyone out there can Are feel free. Sometimes. You weirdo. Uh, well, because I don't want. Like, we just send it out into the ether and we assume that it works. You gotta yeah. make sure that Hell the, yeah. the timing. That's what the, Twitter's for. The repertoire. You get the feedback from the Twitter. So if I'm listening to you name 15 cards, it's often difficult to catch them all, and I don't necessarily want to rewind. I'm usually driving. I don't want I, to... I thought you were going to say drunk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, God. My voice is so shot today, too. It's been a long sport ball weekend for us. Uh, I spent all of yesterday yelling at the top of my lungs. In 100 degree heat. 102 at kickoff. So yeah. It was a rough giving away the details. Yeah. But, uh, anyway. So it's, uh, for me, it's been a long August of cube drafting. Uh, GP Portland was, was quite the cube stravaganza, as those of you that may follow some of my Canadian slash drunk metal contingent would know. So we got we jammed a lot of games there, got a lot more people interested in the format, which I consider to be a huge home run. And I joke that if all I had to do was go to a Grand Prix and play Magic with 50 new people every weekend, a lot more people would be interested in things like this format. So, with that said, I did make a bit of a minor change to our particular cube, which Eck mostly hated on. Yeah, so there was a summer update, you know, as there often is, you know, little incremental bits and pieces here and there. Generally, I try to keep it to 1% release. Um, sometimes we get a little, you know, like maybe a, a new strategy comes out we won't really want to try. And long story short, I try to keep it to percent release, but once in a while... You gotta make a little spring cleaning update. Impetus yeah. will okay. change other things. So, so, I get this email, you know, and I'm at work, and... Yeah. Oh, email. Just oh, cube changes. Oh, oh, okay. This is something. It's something. Whatever. And it was a list of like fifteen card changes, um, which I'll pull up here and put on the screen. And I, I think I unilaterally hated all but one of them. Oh, I was. Um, so no I guess that's not really unilateral because I didn't. I wasn't hated off. Still, but the majority of these, uh, I was not a fan of, and I voiced my opinion on it uh, directly via email. Uh, as sternly worded as I could. We had a face-to-face -face conversation not long after that. And sure. We went to A's game together uh, like the, 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 that weekend. Not a whole lot was set in stone, and I feel like a lot of the ones that you criticized most heavily didn't end up actually making the changes. I just... A lot of stuff I felt like you were pretty middle of the road on. Oh, well, well, that doesn't doing? work. That's a... Uh, All right. Sorry. Technical. Anyway. So, very quick breakdown on the, on the audio side. I'm just going to run through these really fast. Scepter of Dominance becomes Battle Screech. Decree of Justice becomes Midnight Haunting. Faded Retribution becomes Council's Judgment. Frontline Medic becomes War Priest of Thune. Mangara of Karandor becomes Ameria Angel. And I'll stop you at white, just to go over my reasoning behind this switch. If you can't tell from the card selections, a token creature theme in white becoming a mildly more prevalent. A lot of people out there have drafted uh, Vintage Masters Online. They understand how cards like Battle Screech work. Um, so, really, most of these cards just move towards helping, you know, three out of five. Uh, Council's Judgment, we were just a little behind the curve on, just because I hated the wording on Will of the Council. I didn't really like, I didn't like that whole angle, but it, you know, it deals with things like Turn-In Nemesis. And that it's is, KSR for one way, way. Yeah, and again, that, that's part of this format, so that, that card should exist. Uh, and then I like War Priest as a value guy. Blue, white can never have enough two drops that don't cost double white. And I didn't realize I was backdooring into a lot of jokes about me never knowing what that card does. But whatever. Um, the, to me, for the astute internet viewers. <laughs> yes. The two of you that have any idea what we're talking about. Um, lastly, on the cuts side, uh, I'm most sad to see a card like Decree of Justice finally leave the queue. Be good. Uh, but only people that were not in the know made the mistake of ever casting it, which always led for feel-bads. See, I don't understand what you're talking about, because I, like, exoed a at least two drafts in a row with the Free Justice as a win con. Sure. That, that, I'm not saying that doesn't happen. But I'm just saying that that card, it's not what it used to be. And, and, and it, what I'm saying is, is that Midnight Haunting is like, raise the alarm. Right. And that's not remotely in the ballpark of the power level of Q. But you add flying to those guys, and you got a stew going. You don't. 
really have a suit. And here, here is where we, uh, we like lingering souls is only good because it has flashback. I mean, it's it's very good because it has flashback. No, it's only good. Your words are getting mixed up. I understand. So more changes. Misdirection is becoming ray of command. Sunder is becoming arcane denial. Sunder losing the seismic assault effect. Like, still not having a lot of blue aggro. Sunder, uh, the blue changes and nothing of value was lost, but also nothing of value was added. Sure. That's why I don't like these it's changes. You have no reason to complain. Like, but, like, misdirection for Ray of Command is like, who gives a shit? No I, one wants to play either of those cards. I like the concept of misdirection. I, I, I agree that it kind of... It never got out the blocks. But Ray of Command is stupid, and I don't like adding it. I would rather have Stifle. Like, attacking a card's intelligence isn't really helping this debate. It's dumb, it's art is bad. <laughs> like, I would rather have Stifle in that spot. You might as well talk about its girlfriend at this point. It, I don't really think you have a leg to stand on. She's a hoe. Alright, alright. That, that magic card's imaginary I, girlfriend. I'm kind of surprised you didn't pull out a violin from Mangara. I I like Mangara. I, I mostly don't like a Mary Angel, because that card doesn't do anything. Okay. I like Faded Retribution, because I like killing Planeswalkers. Like, this whole thing, see, you're getting me all worked up. <laughs> Liliana's Raver is becoming Obnixilus the Fallen. Curse of Shallow Graves is becoming Victim of Night. I like Liliana's Raver, and I like Curse of Shallow Graves, and I hate Obnixilus, and I don't care about Victim of Night. This is what I'm talking about. This is, like, basically the email I've sent him after I saw these changes. It's like, he cuts cards that I want, and adds cards I don't want, <laughs> and then I make this suggestion, like, hey, why are you doing this? And it's like, fuck you, I'm making the changes. Okay. Well, you know, for me, a little bit of field testing would help these scenarios. Adding landfall cards back into the cube is one of the reasons why Zendikar Limited uh, could have been so much better than it even was if it didn't come down to playing two ones for two all the time. Because flooding out now adds elements of gameplay. Liliana's Reaver was universally one of the worst cards in cube. Uh, like, Hill Giant Plus is not getting it done. Obnixilis is terrible. And, and I think that the will have a little more gameplay to really feel that. I think that card I think that card does stuff. I think that that's an actual threat to your opponent's life total and okay. and landfall being a thing. Okay. Uh, Victim of Night, I'm a little lukewarm on because I think that could be one of several different removal spells. I just know that Curse of Shallow Graves was not living up to the expectations we had set for it. I was happy with it. I played that card a lot, and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed getting it late and winning with it. And using the tokens for various strategies, like Undercity Informant, which is now becoming worse every time you make these changes, because there's a package deal. Uh, Speaking of changes that make no sense out of any other context, Kurt Ape becoming Crater Hellion. Why are we cutting Kurt Ape and leaving in Loam Lion and fucking uh, Wild and Coddle? Because Remember the, we added them and removed them as a package because they don't make any sense to do one at a time? That's because the green-white aggro deck is actually showing a lot of... Uh, Results like that deck is, is being played a lot in in various forms. Meanwhile, the red green aggressive strategy is always in that weird limbo space. It has been where it doesn't really exist as a deck. Meanwhile, the big red decks still need support to do other than than just blast off removal spells all the time. So the Crater Hellion is not even good. That's the problem. I don't like that card. All right, I like it. I know you do, which is why you added it. Yeah. The one change I did like. Colonian Hydra becoming Rampaging Baylots. I'm willing to take the Fall on the Sword for Colonian Hydra. I pushed for that card's inclusion. I thought it was going to be good. It didn't do anything. And I admit being wrong on that. And I think Rampaging Baylots will be better solely because it has Trample. Oh, I was I was thinking because of Landfall, similar to my Up Next list. Oh, but who gives a shit about that? <laughs> Just, Ak is ready for a 6-6 Trampler for 6. Yeah, whatever. Prime right. Time, it, I mean, Primeval Time wasn't in for a million years, and... A lot of the reason that card's good is because it's a 6-6 six, six trampler. True. That's really what Green is looking for. Sylvan Scrying becoming Recollect. Okay, whatever. Like, the, this... The, I would like this to be a more interesting card, but neither of these are interesting, so this isn't, like, a plus or minus, like, mental space of the cube, if that makes any sense. So, like, so my uh, feelings behind this is we had added Sylvan Scrying when we brought in the um, Bizarre Baghdad package, feeling that that package needed a lot of support. Uh, Bizarre Baghdad has gone on to do pretty decent things by itself, uh, regardless of a card like Sylvan Scrying. Meanwhile, regrowth effects do go a long way with things like Bizarre Baghdad, and a lot of other stuff, because, you know, your cards in cube are good, you'd like to cast them more than once. So bringing in uh, more of them, I feel, is strong, especially to help support things like Oath of Druids, etc., etc. Yeah. And, and again, much like what X said, nothing of value is lost here. So... 
I gotta say, of these cards, you only want to murder me for, like, half of them. So that doesn't make me feel too bad. So, okay. This is going to... This is, in reality, going to be a larger insult than it's going to sound on paper. Ooh. But a lot of this feels like the moto cube changes that they always make. Which are cube changes for the sake of making changes. Okay. Like, okay. you're not subtracting or adding anything. You're just shuffling cards around for no reason. Other than to apparently make you full of rage. Which because I was it's not dumb! To Don't do. change it if it's, like... Like, there are so many of these changes where it's like, the card in there isn't great, sure. But the card you're adding isn't any better. So, like, why make, why even make this shit? I mean, like, I, I, all you're doing is messing with people's expectations who don't necessarily read the cube update every goddamn time. I, see, I think I think that the white is a direct inverse to that statement, being that you're adding consistency into the token generating strategy. Like, I mean, looking at Battle Screech, Midnight Haunting, and a Merry Angel, being like, I can draft the white tokens creature deck, goes a really long way. Yeah, but in that thing is a trap also. That's in, the problem. Well, I'm trying to support it, so it's not a trap. If it was a trap, we'd want to cut it from the cube. Right, the problem is the issue with the token deck has never been making tokens. The issue is that the tokens are don't do anything, and you spend all this energy and effort to make a bunch of 1-1 one -one flyers, and your opponent is, like, casting actual broken spells that they don't let you play in other formats. It's a diverse format. Like, you're playing cards that wouldn't see play in standard against cards that are restricted in vintage. What card wouldn't see play in standard? A Mary Angel? It'd be, it's awesome play in standard. But it wouldn't. Like, all right, all right, all right. I, I, will, I will open it up again. If you, would, if you would make... What other white creature, preferably one that makes token creatures, would you like to see? Let me put me on the spot now. All right, yeah. I, I, you don't have to answer it right now. I'm saying, you know, take that information, yeah. bring me some constructive feedback... You know, like, Scion of Itugazi was one of the cards we were excited to get initially until we realized that because right. it could create an infinite that, loop, it's actually just not good. Like, rule, rules, unfortunately, yeah, yeah. prevented that card from being yeah. reasonable. Um, um, but that, that's in the vein that I'm thinking of. I, I, just, well, I want you to understand that before you're like... I will send you I will send you a brainstorm email this week. So Kenny understands white is bad and cute. We're trying to work... Right. With white is the new black. Yes. Yeah, well, that'll be a bad YouTube channel for Magic one of these days. Yeah, yeah. So, speaking of the Moto Cube changes, what a what a beautiful way to bridge topics. Do you uh, have Do you have that from the? I sent you an email about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we are, it, it's nice. I feel like in some ways we're vindicated. In other day, in other ways, someone kind of listened. Maybe not necessarily to us, but to somebody out there um, about the way MTGO Cube was handled. And that that being a uh, Oh, I sent it to you in the email. You probably find it faster. Oh, the link is in the email? Yeah, I sent you the link. In the email. Right. I'm a nice guy. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Anyway, so, uh, what was it? Uh, Prozac has taken up, Adam Prozac has taken up the reins of making sure, the top one, yeah. <coughs> trying to make sure that the MTGO cube isn't uh, filled with complete garbage. So, we, we, we have a new cube curator as it comes to, to Moto. Just want to double check. That is, in fact, Adam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just making sure. So, uh, you know, talk about the updates and trying to balance stuff, removing traps, and you know, all adding cards or whatever. And when I read this, I was, I, I read the article and was optimistic and happy. Okay. And then I saw the changes they're making, and immediately they lost anything that they gave me. Tell me more. We're going to remove traps from the queue. And then they, they add more terrible cards that don't do anything. They add Jalira Master Polymorphous, like Athreos. All, you know, we're cutting traps. Here are ten new traps. They're only not traps yet because people aren't aware that they're traps. I don't think it's that bad. I mean, it's not I think there were, I think there were a few cards that fall into... Isochron Scepter. Right, that might be one of the main problem cards. Like, you know, there are a lot... And I mean, a lot of this makes a lot of sense. I'm glad they cut Bounce Lands. I'm glad they cut a lot of, you know, the derpy cards that don't do anything. And I get that their cube is different than ours. And it's not going to be exactly the same. It's not powered. And they want combat to be a focus. And I get, like, I get that. But don't, like, you cut Fire Blast for Incinerate. That doesn't even make, like, that, like, what, 
on what planet does that even like come into your brain? So the, the logic behind a change like that, from what I read from the article... Right, is you want other decks than just Mono Red, because Mono Red was overpowered in this queue. Alright, so without blowing through this, so people that haven't read the article can understand. I mean, we're trying to make a deadline here. Part of, part of Prozac's thing was... Not only trap, you know, trap cards are are one thing. You know, having a tinker be in the in the non holiday cube and having very few targets for it is bad. Having Yog Will and the Storm cards rarely come together, if ever. Yes, those are all bad. Frost Titan for Soul of Ravnica. Okay. Inferno Titan for okay. Soul of Chandelier. He didn't nail it a hundred percent out of the park, but he has gone way further than a lot of the people have. Genesis for Genesis Hydra. I like the I like the like thematic changes. Full flavor. Like, Full flavor. Yeah. So yeah, that part of the list is that is I'm changing right. cards I, for I, changing I, state. The red, now the, the focus with red was that only the mono red decks were winning. Those mono red decks were only aggressive mono red decks. So yes, there are obviously inferior cards. We can universally agree that they are in there, but they're there in an attempt to support other archetypes, which I like the idea right. of. I like to think that you could draft like, other cards. Like, awesome, you cut Headhunter and you cut Hallowed Burial. Sick. You add Dictative Erebos and Dictative Heliod. Why? Because like, you cut garbage. This, this is like what I was talking about with you. You're cutting garbage, but adding garbage. Like, you're not improving anything. Right, but for this cube, it's to add new garbage that newer players are familiar with that they get to play in this format that is of a bit of a bridge for them. Like, okay, cool, you cut Empty the Warrant. Can you add Gutter Snipe? Well, right, that makes sense. It's you big. cut Manriki Gusari and add Grafted War Gear? That's a huge upgrade. Like, uh, it's just... Uh, you cut City of Brass for Mana Confluence. Newer, newer cards that newer players have played okay. with and they, and they can see. The cube should be about nostalgia and the value, unless you're making a thematic cube. If you're going the history of magic is the point, your cube should have cards, like, it should just be the only the newest version of everything. That's why I'm big on, like, original printings and not promos. Because it's about the history of Magic and the years before us and be even before you played. Right, but Moto Cube's like in a that. rough spot because Moto Cube has to appeal to newer players that don't know what a City of Brass is, but they do know what a Mana Confluence is. Well, thankfully, if you play Magic, it's very likely that you can read. And therefore, you should be able to identify, oh, I know what this is. So, if anything, we should be advocating for longer draft periods during the cube queues so that people I mean, can read all the cards. The cube should just be up all the time, and they should update it when sets come out. I'm not hating on drafted work. I'm just saying, more of my point, there's a lot of changes in this that it's like, okay, cool, you cut cards that nobody likes, I'm a fan. You added cards that don't need to be there, oh, like, so you haven't improved anything. I'm, I'm saying... 85 to 90 percent of this is all positive, working in the right direction. Sure, I'm trying to agree with you, saying that there are definitely big misses that were added, and I am surprised at that happening after someone with such vision and, and intelligence on the issue went through with a fine tooth comb on this thing. Right. That's where I'm kind of like, why is this happening? Right. It, it's like I'm optimistic reading the article, and then I lose that optimism looking at the changes because because a few sore spots stick out to you. It's a lot of sore spots, dude. It the cuts are good. I'm not arguing that the cuts are bad. They cut they cut storm. They cut bounce lands. They cut a lot of stuff. Phantasmal bear. Who right. you hate. They cut a lot of stuff that doesn't do anything. But they added like what I wanted to see is cutting bad cards for good cards. Right. Because there are a ton of cards that's like, why is this not in the Moto Cube? It's insane. And they, this is the perfect opportunity. It's like, we're fresh slate, we're going to cut a bunch of stuff, we're going to fix it, we're going to blah, blah. And then they added none of it, and they added a bunch of cards that no one wanted that aren't good. So, it boils down to, instead of cutting bad for good, we cut bad for new. No, we cut bad for bad. I don't get Old, new, I don't care. We cut bad for bad. And that is not progress. To me. Well, these cards are good. They, they put a Phenomancer in. I'm not saying they did not add. I mean, good so many cards. of these, some of these cards are like, yep, that contradicts the thing you just said. I'm not, I'm not saying it's 100% bad cards for 100% good card or bad cards. What I'm saying is, the problem is still that your percentage of bad cards is way too high, and this is not fixing that issue because you're still adding in new garbage. <laughs> it's a, just a new churn of crap. Uh, I think the I will agree with you in that the, the newer cards are not as good as older cards of previous generations that could have been added, but in my mind, 
were not added because the player base is too new and won't understand those cards. Which and I and I think that is a bullshit cop out because it's cube. It should be about history and it should be about exposing newer players to older cards to get them interested in legacy and vintage. I agree with you that we should do that in the long run, and I think with the that the team that is in charge of this is at a crossroads where they don't want to jam a bunch of stuff that, at newer players that they're trying to get to play this format. You and I right now, we get rewarded a couple times a year with Holiday Cube, which is obviously the time where I definitely get on there and draft the most. The last couple of times that non-Power Cube has come to MWGO, I've completely steered clear just because it, it hasn't been as appealing to me as Holiday Cube has been, but we're in a difficult spot based on the you know what we want out of that cube. Can we at least agree on that? I mean, I guess. I mean, this is, at least for me, it's a bit of a moot point. I, but that's... To me, I, progress is being made. Can we agree there? Sure. I mean, Things are being done. X hopes may have gotten a little too high. Well, I mean, it, my hopes got high, like, literally in the article. That was the problem. Right. It's like, the, <laughs> it literally went up, and then immediately, like, Whoa! like, it was too, like, if they had posted this article, and then, like, sat and stewed for, like, a week, and then posted this, I'd be like, okay, whatever, this is as usual. Because it was all at once. I was like, oh, maximum hype, and then just... Dead. I, I just think you're letting a few bad apples ruin this entire crop of what would be positive movements for the cube. I'm just saying, they had a lot of bad apples in the crop already. They had a lot of bad apples. They got rid of some of the bad apples, and then added a few more bad apples. So, like, right. they've reduced the bad apple count, but they could have done so much more and chose not to, and that's right. what I find frustrating. And I think what you've done is you've encapsulated the MTGO experience in one short phrase. So it depends on where, how you, where, where and how you kind of set your expectations, because I think sure. that for a product that Eck already kind of boycotts at this stage of the game... I, I don't use Moto anymore. Right. And, and I'm in That's a, why it's kind of a moot point for me. I'm in a limbo area where it's like I want to use it, but I'm not really incentivized to use it. So uh, I'm waiting for Holiday Cube to come back, and then I'll probably reinstall V4. Not worth it. Version 4 is insulting to uh, consumers. Version. Agreed. And generally, we steer, steer clear of topics of that nature, because I don't want to give MTGO any kind of press. But Cube is where we want to be, so if they're trying to make that movement in that area... What I like from this, what I like from the Cube update concept is, like, at least someone in a position of power at Wizards is having an open dialogue and a discussion about Cube. And the only thing that can come from that is more things that are geared towards Cube in general. Like things like a promo set or whatever. More cards that, you know, we, we've got this Cube on Moto and it's great, but we're really missing this one thing. Oh, we'll put it in a set, whatever. It's like, you know, it's like EDH stuff now, right? EDH get like a, a lot of niche cards in whatever set comes out. Like, they get a lot these days. I think it a lot these days. They get their own, you know, commander set. They get their own this, that, the other thing. They're, they're the, uh, the favorite child right now. Definitely. But, you know, I foresee, you know, just because the fact that they're talking about this and having the discussion at least gives me a glimmer of hope of, like, maybe someday someone will care so strongly about Cube that they make a product for Cube. Right. Or, like, at least a couple cards explicitly for Cube. And, and this is the best way to have things like that happen for us. If, if we don't, if we don't try to promote this and do the best we can with it, what, what are we? What are we really going to do? Right, we're just shooting ourselves in the foot. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're moving right along. We're we're on like a quick, we're on kind of a time table here. Act does not want to miss kick off. No, I'm sorry. This has been a weekend of sports ball. I think what he's telling you is that the Niners are more important to him than you. Uh, at this point, it's uh, early in the season. Hype is high. Um, See, I think it's ironically to me the Niners are a better long season team. Like I, mean, I would better at, all. They, they're just all good all yeah. the time. There's nothing wrong with that. Any week is Niners week. Uh, but, we got a new set. Full spoiler came out this weekend. I don't know if we're going to get through it in 40 minutes, but we will try. If I think we we're cannot, going to. Oh, we're going to. We Oh, spoilers. We're trained professionals. That's that's really what you're telling you, is there's not a lot of time. Spoilers, we're, we're going to talk about content. I, I, will get, I will try to get us to stop on every single card that's okay. worth talking about. Okay, we're going to start right here with the white cards. Uh, none of these are really playable, but let's touch on Outlast. Real fast. I, uh, there is definitely a card in white that's going to be cute. Yes, but I'm saying these ones. Right oh, there. oh, I was, I was. I, I, I literally opened it up. This is the top of the ones. These aren't making it. But let's since uh, three of the four of these have outlast. Yeah, we could talk about one of the laziest. And this is a set that is full of lazy mechanics. This wasn't even like phoned in. This was like 
like email, like text message. It's just in. so awkward because the outlast mechanic is 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 all around the strike zone. If you follow me with this fourth plus one plus one counters, I like it. activated ability. I like it. it's a trigger. It's on a creature synergy with other stuff. It does stuff, but tap it, tap it, tap it, sorcery speed. Lazy, lazy, lazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if lazy is the problem. I, I feel like Why not? non-interactive. I mean, you have to do this on your turn. You Why have not? to do this yeah. at a sorcery. Uh, if you had tweaked this slightly, if you had made it only activate once a turn, but not have to tap, so that your guy could like still enter combat one way or the other would be really helpful here. I mean, you you know, obviously have to adjust all the costs. Right. You know, we, but, are, you know, we, we understand that. Like, We're not saying like make one tweak overall to the cards we have now right. and it would be good. I'm just saying it's very boring. And right. and it, it's since it's starting at such a, a negative spot already, you put a lot of pressure on any of these cards ever being good in a, in a real format. Oh, yeah. When I look at Outlast, it's like, yes, for cons limited, Maybe some of these okay. cards will see play. Yeah. Not but, all of them, but some of them. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's our outlast thing. Just so, go until you see something you comments, want to talk about. Comments, comments, blah, blah, blah. Ah, well, it shouldn't take very long. Yeah, and hostilities. Hey, what do you know? Uh, so the, 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 the now traditional F you to the previous block, middle fingers thrown to the sky behind you, uh, eat that, bestow. Well, that was a really long way, winded way of saying new wrath the guy that also deals with bestow guys, but I guess that was also a long winded way of saying so, new five mana wrath that's not terrible. Right. Uh, yeah, Winds of Wrath and at all. This is probably, if you're playing Winds of Wrath, this is obviously coming in play. I don't know if it's obvious. I think that they're... I like how that they're so, like, diametrically opposed. Right, protect the guys with stuff on them. Or blow up everything. Uh, I think this card will be making our cube, and pro probably the, the vast majority of... I like that it gets equipment. Exactly. Like, the fact that this gets Batter Skull... Right. Like, if they're tapped out, it, you deal with Batter Skull fully. And, and a lot of players that aren't super familiar with cards like Batter Skull will often wrath it, thinking it's like a 4-4 Vigilance And guy. you've really only bought yourself 8 mana of time. Right. Um, so I, I think, you know, Winds of Wrath, it does have the very classic, very clean, destroy no regen clause that we are very familiar with playing longtime players. But at the same time, the, uh, you know, save the guys with auras on them part has become so less and less and less relevant it over does, the years. I think that if you're playing Winds of Wrath, I think this is a logical switch. And I think that if you're playing one of the other five mana ones, like Route or Hallowed Burial or any of the other ones... I would play this over Hallowed Burial. I think it's at least worth considering, depending yeah. on the, the, the texture of the rest of your queue. If right. you have a lot of equipment, this is probably better. If you don't have very much and you have like no bestow... This is probably worse, and I do want but to I think say, it's close. I do want to say this is not a uniformly you should play this wrath in your cube. Yeah. It's based on size, it's based on what you need. Right. You know, five and six mana wraths. That's why I'm comparing ready. it to the other five mana wraths. You're doing a good you're job. You're upgrading a five mana wrath spot, basically. We, we are strangely in universal agreement on this guy. At last, at last, garbage, garbage, garbage. The closest guy. There he is. Harold of... Harold uh, of Anifenza. Yeah, that was the closest one to even being Did talked At least you about. get tokens. Right. But it's so slow. But it doesn't curve out. You play yeah. a 1-2 two for 1, and, and then on it. 3 mana, yeah. you can tap him out and make a 1. So. Uh, do, 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 and, uh, I kind of like this guy. I mean, he's very basic, but this is like... It reminds me a lot of that tree folk from Morning Tide. Yeah, like, like you three, get a little buddy. Uh, Master of Pearls, uh, I mean, cute. Uh, as a quick aside, uh, I am a really anti the morph design choices in this set, specifically the whole, like, if you have morph on morph combat, there are no morphs in the set that unmorph for less than five that will win combat unscathed. Huh. I hadn't really... They published an article it. about it. If you, if, it's like, you attack with a morph, and they block. There are no morphs in the entire set that unmorph for less than five mana that will kill the morph and live. Like, none. So, like, there's no, like, battering Craghorn equivalent. If there is, it costs five. Cutthroat. No zombie cutthroats. No. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They all, it's five and up. That's, because they're like, we wanted nice. people to safely be able to block because we didn't like the mind game. And to me, the mind games are the whole point of morph. Kind of. I mean, the whole fact of, like, I thought the whole point of Morph was to make combat more interesting overall. Yeah. If it's combat at less than five mana open is not interesting, you right. haven't done a lot for it. Yeah, yeah. On a side note. Um, we, we have already hit the only thing worth talking about in the way. I don't think I, I'm just, like, I'm just, suspension feel is close. I mean, 
you know, that effect, obviously, it's no Journey to Nowhere. But we're, we're at 680 cards, and I'm happy with the number of Oblivion Rings we have. Yeah, it's true. Um, okay, so. Clever Impersonator, here we go. Here's a card. That one's going right in there. Two thumbs up. Prixie Metamorph is already good. One and, of the best. And that's artifacts of creatures. We've now expanded the, the capabilities to enchantments and planeswalkers. Yeah, spike it. Holy moly. <laughs> Copying a planeswalker, this just seems insane. Uh, Clever Impersonator, I think, is going to be probably the best casual card to come out of this set universally. Um, if fetch lands weren't in this set, this card would be even higher on the impact scale, but I feel a lot of players are so, you know, just totally jazzed for all this non-basic mana fixing uh, that this guy might get a little overlooked, but in the long run, he is absolutely huge for all formats that are fun. Um, he might even be good in actual constructed formats. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, like, they play Karn, you play this guy, gank your Karn. Like, yeah, that's oh good. My God, I like where your head's at. Real gross. Yeah. So, I, I really like this guy. I think he's a snap include. He, it's obvious. He is mythic. The mythics in this set are a bit wonky. Uh, which is unfortunate for us, because this card will be making the cube. But, Clever Impersonator, I would be impressed if this card doesn't make all the cubes, where he would be eligible. He's, he's, he's an eligible, yeah. right. He's not making he's an eligible cube. receiver. He is in your He's an ineligible receiver in Popper Cube. It's fine. Uh, blah, 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 do, do, do. Yeah, I'm just like... On the cut side, it's not sure because blue creatures are so like strong. We've cut a lot of the loose clones. At this point, I'll probably have to cut the hyper, whatever, the siren, the one one hypnotic siren. Yeah, hypnotic sirens probably uh, have to cut here. I haven't looked, but there's definitely a couple of cards that are like on the fence. I mean, this guy hates Doc Mystic. I don't hate. Ooh, ah. ooh we've upgraded. Ooh. I mean, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> Does that mean I hate it? Kind of. I don't know. Uh, it's it's difficult because well, you know it's like a whole conversation about blue creatures about how you'd love it if they ever attacked but they don't really ever attack. All What's the whole is, thing of like do you want to make a blue aggro deck or do you not want to waste your life? Right. Like we still play Phantasmal Bear because there's this dream where you play. I mean, like hey, you finally you turned the corner on Azure Mage though. Yeah, Azure Mage is fine. Yeah. It took a long time, but I, like it's not a creature. Like it's an enchantment. It's a treasure trove that occasionally deals two damage to your opponent on turn. See, I think it's like I think it's like a deal for that occasionally draws a card. Okay, and that's why this format's so great. Uh, Pearl Lake Ancient. Uh, I kind of like this. Wow. Okay. It's you, weird. You, you have the floor because I don't like this guy. So six seven is actually a pretty relevant uh, power and toughness. It better be because it's, it's trumping Titans. Okay. Which is like actually a thing that you know matters. Yeah, that's a in, legit. In a cube environment, it matters yeah. more. There are a lot of titans this guy can go to battle with. Flash can't be counted means he's getting in and he's blocking. Sure. And then you can always save it. The prowess is like who cares? Now he's a seven eight, but the the fact that he's very difficult to kill and very difficult to stop. I, is I actually like this guy. Okay. Um, I like Flash. I like big dudes like this, and he, you know, he's gonna eat anything in combat. I guess. I guess when I see this card, I think of how we don't play a card like Draining Welk, and how I'm. It costs one more than Titans. That is true. It's not a six. It's a, it's a seven. Right. So you have to be the, going first. You have to not have anything to want to do on your turn, and then you can block non infernoist Titans. Uh, it's not. It's it's not awful. I do like the ability to possibly save it. If damage stacked, this would be a this legitimate be conversation. Insane. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, don't, I, I don't think it's going to make the cut in most cues because, again, blue is blue. I, yeah. And I mean, it's, gonna be, it's obviously it's competing with a lot of insane shit. Right. But I think it's at least worth, like, file this one under the maybes. Like, put it in the on-deck circle. You know, it could make the cut if we're looking for that kind of thing. Um, what do you think of this card, by the way? I don't know if this is necessarily a cute conversation. Quiet but I, contemplation for a blue and two colorless. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously not a... I mean, is it a build around me enchantment for cons limited? I, this thing feels a lot like a weird... Like an easier to trigger, but you have to pay for it uh, uh, astral slide. In a way. Like I, you just draw the game out forever. If you have a bunch of like... If you spare mana and cantrips. Or anything. Yeah. yeah, but with this set isn't exactly chock full of cantrips. No, and that's the problem with prowess. But I just... I just kind of like it. Like, if you're a control deck, you can play this. Like, I'll draw some cards type of guy. Yeah, this set is... I'll kind of that spell type of guy. As far I'll as, like, it. cons limited is concerned, it's also distinctly lacking some just, like, 
single red deal ones, scry there's ones. There's no cheap removal, it's weird. There's no, like, spark jolts. There's no, like, yeah. way to, like, trigger the things you want to do the stuff with. Right. There's no... The, I... I, I I looked at the when I looked at the set. My first one of my first reactions was like it's all flash and style and no filler or substance. Like there's no there's no foundation with which to build these crazy wacky decks on. But there's all the top end. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, Grave, Grave Titan is still very very good. Uh, Grave Titan is like the very 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 good. So. Uh, blah blah blah. No, this is really good. I like this super expensive ancestral. It's funny. It's not. I mean, I like going on a treasure cruise. I like, like, the... It, as far yeah. as limited goes, that card's, like, Sift. And it's better than Sift, because you don't have to discard one. But it's a, you want to go on a cruise? Yeah, I know. I'm, it's a fine card. We fade. Oh, we Jeskai a... Elder. Hold on. Do we miss a card? Scroll back up. Oh, that's the... It's this stupid thing. He's a one, two... He's a looter. Oh, he's a looter. With prowess and no evasion. So, I'm... how... okay, so he's not as good as Merfolk Looter or Looter We Elder. already don't play Thought Courier and Merfolk Looter. Well, I think what Kenny's getting at is if you're playing Blue Aggro, this card could be in that vein. Because you loot while attacking as opposed to looting or attacking. Oh, and you're possibly casting spells get things out of your yeah. way and dealing more damage. I would much rather have Il Looter Elcor than that guy. Yeah, I, I think it... With Jeskai Elder, you have to really work for it, and I think at the end of the day, that's not what Blue in, in True Power Cube was really looking for. Right. I think it. I think it's it's just kind of eh. Search the top seven, delve two. Uh, that costs eight without delve. Uh, no thanks. Yeah, I, they go I, on the. They don't go in your graveyard. They go on the bottom of your right. library. I mean, I remember Ancestral Visions was a card for like a hot second. 15 or 18 years ago, and that really wasn't that appealing. Ancestral either. Memories. Really yeah. yeah. Uh... uh Alright, uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, bitter, there we go. Uh, bitter Revelation. I think that's a real card. Bitter Revelation. Look at the top of the Realize this is a four mana sorcery. Alright, what are your feelings on Ambition's Cost? It sucks. Alright, so this card already isn't for you. <laughs> How do you this is a card that draws you fewer cards than Ambition's Cost. But, same you, but you get to go through it. How do you feel about the card 4C? I mean, it's okay. All right. That's used more cards than this. Right, you're getting warmer to what I'm getting at. That also, this also costs you life. Uh, true. You have so, so you're telling me that in a world where ambitious cost is an option, right? You would rather pay one less life, draw one fewer card, but get to look at another one. Read the bones is in cube. I really like read the bones. Read the bones is very good. Okay. Read the bones is three mana. Right. Just lots less than four. Okay. And it's. You get to go through four cards if you want them. In theory, if you see a good card and read the bones, right. you're seeing a lot fewer cards. Sure. I'm just saying this is a four mana sorcery. Have you lost your mind? This is terrible. Um, well, all I know is for a while, we were playing Ambition's Cost and... And I begged Craven. you constantly to cut them. Right, and we've cut one of them. We're slowly making progress. I was unsure if maybe with Graveyard Strategies, this card would be appealing to you, but I thought it's worth talking about. Give me Night's Whisper, or give, or give me that. I see. All I know is I'm delaying Eck from getting to talking about Bloodsoak Champion. That guy is the real deal. Yeah, I ding, definitely, ding, 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 I definitely ding, ding, ding. saw this card and assumed that it had once per turn clause on it. Uh, but thankfully it does not. So you can pop off with this guy. Goblin Bombardment. Which is, sure. Yeah, you a, know. a true limited house. Yeah, he can also, if he attacks and then dies in combat, he can bring himself back. Which is sweet. Um, yep, this guy is very good. I, although we're quickly approaching a world in which no black creature can block for less than four mana or something. Yeah, like we're okay, grave crawler, blood gas, this guy. Like we're slowly getting this like list of dudes who like you can't block, and it's weird. You know? Yeah. I, I stopped the time. That guy's about, very good, though. Yeah, that guy's making the cube. He's making the cube out of No question. I mean, I'm not going to stop it. Bitter Revelations is, is, is a different style of card, and we, we Black is looking for the card advantage, that's why I stopped to talk about it. I can understand why there would be a lot of dissonance on the matter. Yes, Act doesn't like that it costs four mana. I understand that. I'm not adding it, but I definitely think there are so many bricks in this set that aren't even worth talking about. Oh, sure, this set's card advantage. This This card was, you know, worth talking about. Like, for example, you're going to go buy a lot of black cards now that I don't even consider worth stopping at. Dead drop. Hand man. 
How to despise. Remember when we played that for five seconds? Yeah. Empty the pits. Black, 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 black. In a 40 card format, I don't think Empty the Pits really has a chance. No. Um, thanks for playing. I kind of like this guy a little bit. Um, I would almost never play him as a morph. Right. Just a 3 2 whenever another one of your guys I dies. mean, 3 2 for 3. Okay, whatever. That's a fair, fair deal. One of their odd guys tried to draw a card. Well, Black is sacking guys a lot. But, you know, so this is not the worst. I don't think it's like, I'm not jumping, chopping at the bit to put it in. But I think it's at least worth, like, if we're looking for that kind of thing, it's there. Okay. That's fine. Uh, black, black, I'm scared, 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 scared. Hey, look, did you like Tombstalker? Did you like a worse Tombstalker? Yeah, the fact that we didn't get Tombstalker is a little surprising. I have to imagine we're getting in another set, right? Here we go. Do, oh. Keep it going. So, and we're done with black. That was fun. Yeah. Two maybes, one definite out of the color black. Yeah. Uh, this set's not uh, very deep for cube. Um, I thought about two unravenous rats for a hot second, but that's not really. Happening. Nah. Ravenous rats hasn't been in for ever. Ashcloud Phoenix? Thoughts? Questions, comments, concerns? Not terrible. Definitely one of the best places they've gone with morph. It's very funky, like, the sequencing of this card. Is it? Because, like, you want to play it face up, and then right. you kill it, and then it comes back face down, and so, then you unmorph it, and well, then... Well, okay, so look at it this way. Four Power Flyer for four mana. Yeah. And you, you definitely get it back once for free. Right. You, it's, like, it's like a Penumbra guy that gives you the good Sure, people. yeah. I, two people will get that, but yeah. yes. Uh, so you've got a four Power Flyer for four, you come, you, and, then you, and then you get a free Grey Ogre. And if you have six mana... And then that you start the whole process. And then that gray ogre may do something if you choose it to. Yeah, it's just one of the weird morphs where you definitely don't want to play it face down. You almost always want to cast it face up, right? You know, which is like a weird spot for a morph to be in. Like morph as an as an intermediate effect rather than an, uh, like a beginning of a creature's lifespan. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Almost every other morph starts as a morph becomes another thing. This starts as this thing, then becomes, and it's like this weird backwards, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyway. I think it's okay. I don't think it's great. It doesn't have, like, haste or anything, so that's kind of part of the problem. Sam, who is a huge fan of uh, Dismember, actually likes the murderous cut that we skipped over in black. Ah, uh, that's a destroy. Yeah, yeah that's the, uh, it, it does hit universally everything. It does have the, the delve on the one black four colorless. Um, not bad. It's okay. I mean, I just think... Delving for four is going to be, like, out of the reach of a lot of decks in the early game, and they're not necessarily going to want to pay four or three mana for this. So, I mean, so you have to kind of guess what do you want to compare this to, because I definitely think that Murderous Cut is very close to a lot of the other removal spells that get played in cube with your, you know, oh, you compare it to Victim of Night, you can compare it to Terror, you can Diabolic to Edict, you can try to compare it to all these other things. It obviously does something different. Um, in a space for how much is it costing for you, because no one wants to play the card murder, which is effectively is much better. Uh, the fact you can cast it for zero, oh no, you can cast it for one. Yeah. Uh, you know, both the question, uh, you know, did you already play Ulcerate? Ulcerate not good enough for you. How is this card similar or different? What do you really want for it? Because obviously, if you're going to pay close to full price for this card, it wouldn't make the cut. You're going to want to cast. The real question right is away. how often. Are you going to pay full price for this? And or, how often is do removing a bunch of your graveyard going to be, like, hugely detrimental to what you're doing? In cube, very rarely. Well, I'm saying, like, in black, black has the most graveyard-based in terms of, like, recurring out of the graveyard. So it's like, man, I really wish this spell cost one less or I didn't have to remove my blood gas from the game to cast it. Like, No, it's not the most exciting, but I, I think that what's really key about this card is it's just destroy any guy. Yeah. Like, if they, if they had literally put any other clause on it, like it, of mana cost clauses or color clauses... Uh, it'd be yeah. worse. Yeah. Obviously. If it killed fewer things, it'd be worse. In a way. Well, I'm just saying, like, it, yeah. it, it has to say kill any guy for it to be a conversation. Just like how Dismember kills effectively any guy. Yeah. I think it's at least worth discussing. I think that we don't need another piece of spot removal right now, but if we get into a space where we want another one, I think it's on the list. Ooh, it might be better than Ghastly Demise. I haven't even considered playing Ghastly Demise in a long time. Yeah, Ghastly Demise hasn't been in in a long time. Yeah, I do miss a Ghastly Demise. Uh, Just a cunning wish for that card all the time. It's true. 
you're we're done with black, and we're, we're probably done with red. Uh, so we talked about the phoenix. Um, um, uh, I kind of like. I, I'm not saying thank you, but I kind of like this card. But it's weird because like it's fireball early and shock late, which is like the exact opposite of what you would kind of want, which is shock early and fireball late. I guess. I s- I, Blaze variant for this set does nothing for me. I, I, this is yeah. This is cool. All right, so Goblin Slide. Mm. People are all up on this card. My opinion on it is, you are never going to have the mana to spare and want to do this. Not never, but rarely. Exactly. You're spending three mana on a card to do nothing, and then spend more mana later to do a little bit, and it's just not worth. Oh, well, did we miss somebody's favorite? Oh, did we miss the one, the two one guy? I don't think we got there yet. No. Okay, I think we were just banging on how bad red is in this set. Okay. All right. So Goblin Slide the other day. Uh, people, people think that like force spiking or like, sphere resisting yourself isn't ever really the big deal because all they see is the upside. Uh, <laughs> the red squirrel nest. It's squirrel nest that you can only activate on turns where you play non creature spells. Right, he's trolling you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's not. It's it's not that. Just everyone thinks a oh, one extra man is no big deal. I mean, it, it always boils down to mentor the meek. Like we always thought, oh, mentor the meek's be great. No, we're gonna have to, never we're, have this. We're gonna cast a bunch of cheap guys after we play Cray. We're gonna play. Okay. We're gonna like. It's gonna be ooh, so gonna be good. awesome. Nope. Nope. Sure, nope. you drew cards. Like I'm sure. Sure, you'll make some one ones. Yeah. Will you make them in a timely manner? Will they do anything? Will they lead you to winning anything? They will not. How, you know, speaking of 1-1 one, one, one Goblin Token Creatures, do you remember Goblin Scouts from Mirage? Yeah. Yeah. Fun card. Five mana, three one ones. They had Mountain Walk. Yeah. Card was completely made in development after they got the artwork back because it was not what it was supposed to be. Right, yeah, yeah. They're like, what, is this, what can this be? Finally, we have uh, something a little more in the realm of reasonable uh, with the Hordling Outburst for three mana. We can get three one one How goblins. times have changed. Yes. Yeah. Shave it down. Still not playable, but... I like the concept. As good as Sprillis. Sam is not making fun of this. Uh, I uh, can't imagine... They're, they're very, very similar cards, and I understand why that comparison. I mean, I guess, was your, like, you know, that land you had, tapping, right. et cetera, et cetera. To me, I'm you just have saying have like spells, the, and... Typically, the green decks have enough mana lying around that they can yeah, spare an open land. It's not even about colors, to me. It's, it's about, if I have something to do, I'm doing it. If I don't have something, I'm always making a guy. Yeah. Here, I have to have both things. At the same time. You have to have something to do and spare mana. Uh, what do you think about, uh, so there's actually a couple cards here. Howl the Horde. Are it's we just got, going right, make it three dudes for three mana, no, no good? fuck off, no. <laughs> Howl the Horde. It's got some, it's got at least some, some pizzazz flash hype around it. Sure. I'm just gonna... Copy s- a big burn spell. I'm gonna start by saying, casting a sorcery that will copy your next instant or sorcery... Weird. ...does not feel good. The pre-fork is a strange one. Right. I, I, I might be missing this card entirely, but I think it's terrible. I mean, it. it I feel like, okay, you triple up on Flame Blast. Is that like just two magical Christmas lands after you've attacked? Well, that's easy for Red. I mean, yeah, throw yeah. a Goblin God in there. But uh, it, this card reminds me a lot of like uh, many. Car- Every time that a set comes out, there's always this card that like people want to really love and find a way to play. Now we gotta break it. Like, who was that guy that held up the universe in the last... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The something. Bear of Worlds. Bear, or there we go, yeah. Everyone's like a 10-10 that when he dies, yeah, he destroys everything. everything. So, like, everyone was really excited about the prospect of that guy doing something in a Gaten Cube environment, but in reality, that card is terrible. And I look at a card like Hell of the Horde, and I feel like... It, I feel like it's the same kind of thing. Are we having sound issues? Now the sound is out of sync. Oh, why are we out of sync? That sucks. Uh, we can just do... No, nah, don't do that. Just let it go. All right. Uh, Jeering Instigator. I kind of like that guy. Unmore Threaten? Unmore Threaten. Yeah. I mean, that's a big game. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm talking, you know, Ray of Command, you hate it on, and that's a pretty sweet Threaten that we want to do it instant right. speed. That's also in blue. And right. not attached to a dude. <laughs> We're always out of sync. That's so true. Uh, okay, initially I had kind of glossed over a lot of the morph dudes being like, yeah, whatever, that's not going to happen for us. 
I think this guy is kind of exciting. If we played Phoenix now, playing Phoenix wouldn't want to make me play this game. The problem is you have to have enough force so that they don't know what they are. Like, that's part of the cost of morph in a non-morph environment. Or it's just a five-mana source. Or you could do an instant speed in front of from attacking. It'd I mean, be funny if red was the only color that got morphs. Uh, yeah. Like Firecat, and we got, like, other ones. So, like, at least red has that. Fortune Thief coming back. That'd be so hot. Oh, my God. I love Fortune You and your heart on Fortune Thief. I just love trolling people with it. I, I, I can't help myself. Um, let's see. What else? Blah, blah, blah. So, end of the day, Jeering Instigator, he's going to get... Do he get, get the nod? He's going to get the call. We'll see if it works out for him. He needs at least, yeah, he needs to. to, to. Um, oh, okay. I guess Sar Sarkin is the card. Yeah, Sarkin. Uh, ob, obs. This, this reminds me a lot of Chandra Noir. I think you, you had made, made that commentary. Like, it either like comes in and blows something up and hangs out. I or mean, better, 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 better than Chandra obviously. Noir, yeah. Instead of pin for one, it's, oh my god, Stormbreath Dragon. Yeah, it, this guy is, is crack you for four. Or flame tongue your guy. Um, this card is very. I mean, good. Yes, it costs five and not four, but come on. Like, yeah. What do you What do you really want here? I think this is you know there are a non-zero number of decks that want the big red flyers. I think this guy goes perfectly into those. The fact that he's a planeswalker means that he's harder to kill than a lot of the other stuff. You know, he's not rat susceptible. Remember, the, the standard for red planeswalkers is is pretty low so, already. Yeah. Like it's really like the we, we keep eyeballing Car Koth being like you're you're bad we know it. we know we're, coming we're on to you yeah <laughs> so I think Sarkin's probably coming for uh, Koth's spot here pretty it's, quick it's possible uh, again again the fact that uh, this guy can definitively come in and kill the problem five has always been a sticking point as opposed to four but I think this guy is so much better than Koth that like it's worth it. Yeah, I, 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 again, I don't, I don't think those cards occupy the same space, but I'm just talking about Red Planeswalkers in general. Yeah. Uh, I gotta say, I loved Wild Guess. I always wished it was good. It never was. <laughs> no. They they make it a little easier to cast. The, the this animated instant, because Wild Guess was a sorcery. This is also a sorcery. Ah, oh, it's a sorcery. I thought it was an instant. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, last but not least, War Name Aspirant. Uh. Yeah, I mean, he's another 3 2 for 2. Red has now got this weird abundance of this card. Um, Gorehouse, Gorehouse Chainwalker, this guy, uh, you know, a bunch of other similar, you know, uh, what's the M, what's the Bloodthirst one? They, like, can't be blocked or whatever. Not Thrill Kill Assassin. No. It was in the core set. Is Stormblood Berserker? Yeah, yeah, Storm yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway. Uh, so there's a bunch of, like, similar, like, Three power guys for two in red. And there's a lot of them. Um, I'm not sure if our cube needs another one right now. And I'm also not sure that this is necessarily... I guess this is better than, like, Gorehouse Chainwalker, because the can't-be-blocked laws. Gorehouse Chainwalker is definitely not getting cut for this card. It's more of a question of, is there room for another... Is something else getting cut for this? Goblin Piker How plus. many of these can we support? Yeah. And we're getting it to, like, the... The problem is that we're at this cross-section where it's like, we need the Shatter guys, but we also want the Beatdown guys... It's we, just a balance we thing. Need red to do He'll probably things. make it in, but it's a question right now of what gets cut for him, and there's maybe. a lot of things that it could be. Maybe. It's yeah, it's not very exciting. Wow, red had a lot more maybes than I thought it was. Yeah, I thought, I, when, I, when we were starting, there's this, a fair number of maybes. I in thought this it was set. like one white card, one blue card, one black card, one red card. Is there a green card? I think there's a green card. I like this guy. Um, put it Hydra. And there's a battlefield. So it has morph when you unmorph it. It's a five five for um, it's a five five when you unmorph it. It's X otherwise, and when it dies, you get a tokens equal its power. Like yeah, eh, it's not the worst. Uh, not happening. I know it's slow and derpy. It kind of reminds me a lot of the great Colonial Hydra experiment. The big turtle. That's cute. Oh right, Rattleclaw Mystic. Duh. The card's just so old at this point. Right. Well, the first spoiled and probably the best. I mean, right? We we thought we were uh, gonna get a lot more exciting new stuff. Yeah, with this morph. set the bar pretty high fast. Um, obviously, this is going in. But it's like why even talk about it? Because people should understand why it's so good, Eck. Because it lets you cast a Primeval Titan on turn four. How? By unmorphing it and then tapping it for mana, also known as reading what your cards do. Omg. So, yeah, because it doesn't have Summoning Sickness the turn after you cast it, so even though it was just a Grey Ogre like, before... I like the fact that if you're Mana Screwed, you can play it face up and use it as an accelerator. <laughs> mana Screwed? I mean, I well, think like, if you're tight on mana, 
You can I, just play it for two sure. and just tap it for mana. I think there are a lot of games where... If you have a little bit of mana and you're looking to go explosive, you play it based I think there are a lot of games where I'm just casting this guy on turn two and he's really good. Yeah, they're, this guy's just very, very good. Waiting a turn to play it as a morph isn't going to do me a lot of good. At the end of the day, Rattle Claw Mystic for sure. Um, you got to stop because people absolutely see the unwritten. Oh, are about, people just ejaculating all over this thing? I Well, for starters, let's say what's going on here. For double green and four, you get a reveal the top eight cards of your library. You can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, and it has... Uh, the rest go in your yard, down at the bottom. Relevant. Key. Uh, you have the Ferocious, where if you control a guy of four or more, you can instead put two guys from the top eight cards. So if you have a four-power guy, you get two more guys for six mana. Let's pretend that part of the card doesn't exist, because that's stupid. So so you just want to play this as the straight-up version? Like, no Ferocious? Why would you not play Summoning Trap? Because this puts cards in your yard. Yeah, you have to pay retail for it. Six mana! So that kind of uh, jumped to the end here, where my whole argument was Summoning Trap is an instant, <clears throat> Summoning Trap looks at the top ten cards of your library. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot more variety there. I think that uh, Summoning Trap would make my cube before it made before this card did, and we're still a little ways off from that. This card is 100% going into Moto Cube. Yeah. Shot, like, for Summoning Trap. What? I don't even think Summoning Trap is in their cube now. I don't even know anymore. Um, blah, blah, blah. I can imagine we're done with green. Morphe bullshit. Yeah. Okay. So now we're into flavor country, awkward gold land, and I want to I want to preface awkward gold land by saying three color cards in cube are tough, and they're tough for you know actually you know Maddie uh, from uh, Heavy Meta did a very good job of explaining why in cube recently, which should have been a way that I just not used the words for before, which is. When you're drafting it and you see a three-color card, you're rarely going to open your draft very early on those cards. You're not, like, snapping off. And then late in a draft process, unless it conveniently works out for you that you can cast one of those cards, you're rarely going to go very far out of your way. And very few of them are worth transitioning into a third color. Like if The ones that are would be the ones that we would play, a la Nickel Bolas. Yeah. Or they're going to be a card that are going to have a powerful impact touching a third color, like a Bant Charm. Right. So very few of those cards end up even being considered because of the restriction based on them being like, I'm so, not going to build a deck around like, that one three-color card. For example, Abomination of Voodoo, just to, like the first one, it is green, blue, red, green, or green, blue, black, and it unmorphs, and it's green, blue, black, and it's a three, four flyer that loots. Now, that's way too many colors to justify that card. Way too many. Right. So, not going to make it. Um, similar with the charms, like the you'd have to have a charm that has all in you know great modes. Like and there's one of them. All right, jump in the gun. Van charm destroys an artifact. There are a lot of good ones of those. Kills a guy. There are a lot of good ones of those. It also counters an instant when it's not your turn, or maybe it is your turn. Your opponent's trying to do stuff to you. Yeah. All very relevant. All can happen. All do stuff for me. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so as Van charm kills a bigger guy, knights whispers and. Double Battle Grove. The third mode on this is very weak, so this is basically a split card. Between kill a big guy or draw, draw two, two, lose two. two. I like the fact that you can always draw cards. Like, I'm a big fan of Charms having a mode where like it's always good, and then other modes that are situational. Um, that being said, the upside on this is just not... It's close, but it's if the green part was better, I think it is would be... So a good, a good example of the reverse would be like a card like Jun Charm. Which, right. under certain circumstances, is always is like a blowout in different directions. Well, yeah, right. Judge Arm is like two blowouts and a backup ability, and this is like two solids and a backup ability, and that's just not worth the three colors. Yeah, so a card like Judge Arm, a lot of people are like, oh, I love it, I want to play it, but it's like on an empty board or whatever, it doesn't do anything. And right. You're like, you're trying to find a way to get value out of it, and it can't. Uh, Anna Fenza, the foremost, I mean, four more three. I, this guy, the text is like mildly, like, Okay, you get a plus one plus one counter on a guy. You can, you get to like samurai the pale curtain their yard. Like, okay, I think like this is like if you're still playing Doran, this is not an upgrade. This is not an upgrade. No. And if you're not playing Doran, this is not going to make it. Right. So you know, okay. And the same thing goes for cards like Angle Shanker. Like this whole section is just is just rot with the problem that there are so many pre-release promo cards. They're all going to be gold for some reason. So like. 
we just have a bunch of rare guys with mildly pumped stats over three colors. This guy, however, I kind of like. Kind of like Butcher the Horde. He's pretty, pretty, pretty aggressively costed. I mean, a 5 4 flyer for 4 is nothing to sneeze at. I would really like it if he got First Strike uh, as one of his abilities, but I'll take uh, Haste and Lifelink uh, over it. Lifelink is kind of the poor man's first strike, or maybe the rich man's first strike, depending on how you look at it. I'm not even really sure. I think that I, I do think that the the variety in abilities here goes a long way because you don't want to cast a three color card. It's like, are you behind? He can go vigilance lifelink, and all of a sudden, like you're gaining the life back and you're able to race and play D. Are you ahead? Or are you trying to close the game out? Give him haste. You know, you can. There's a lot of different ways you can work with this as long as you have creatures to sack, which like, any of these combinations of colors in cube has a, a fair amount of token work and then can splash the third color. So, like, you've either got red-white, assemble a legion, white-black, plenty of tokens in both of those colors. Your, your favorite card, Lingering Souls. Yeah. Uh, red-black, you know, it's got... It's got a sacrifice theme built in. It, right. It's got... You're already playing Bombardment and Blood Gas, so, like, this yeah. works right in with it. So... You... I wouldn't say you've sold me on this card, but you have really accentuated what we need out of a three-color card. I'm a big fan of the fact that this card is so solid without... Like, if it was just a 5-4 flyer for four, like, that's already pretty good. Right. Like, that's your, you know, no drawback. Uh, okay, so going on. I read this wrong the first time I... I thought this was two damage to each... I thought Crackling Doom was Pyroclasm then they sacked their biggest guy. Which and would I was make like, sense. holy shit, that's awesome. Which would make sense as a magic card. Like, why yeah. isn't that a magic card? Right. Uh... Blah, blah, blah. I, if you're listening to this on the text side, I'm literally just making fart noises in my mouth and struggling with the whole section. Uh, the Ascendiaries, none of which quite hit the mark. I, I, again, it all really falls into the three-color problem with Cube, that you need to have nickel bolus quality magic cards. Yeah, like, the, the, the bar is really high because these cards are all hard to cast. So, um, like, Jeskai Charm? A lot of people are huge fans of this card, and, and yeah. again, it's got it's got two modes on it that are strong. Um, I would all say your it's guys, got one mode that's strong. Getting all your guys plus one plus one at lifelink until end of turn is a big combat swing. Yeah, a yeah, combat swing in a deck that's playing red, white, blue. Okay. Oh. Also, maybe. like how much straight up creature creature combat is there in cube? Not a ton. Maybe maybe it's ships passing in the night. That happens in cube between yeah. your your horsemanship guys, your flying guys, your shadow guys. There's so many different modes of, of yeah. combat. Uh, obviously, put a guy on the top of the library, pseudo removal, and then you've got the Fort of the Dome, which is kind of the new standard for charms that you can redirect to a planeswalker in some circumstances. Th this one kind of suffers from three mediocres, right? And uh, I again, a lot of people are excited by this. It just isn't happening for, for us. Yeah, uh, Carrier Lich Lord is cute, bad, but cute. I had forgot that Cedrus. Yeah. Was it Cedrus or... I know he's Cedrus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's the guy that gives all your guys on Earth. Yeah. I forgot that was a magic card until someone asked me about this card, and then I was like, wait a second. That other that card... That sounds like another thing. That other card that's like, like a legitimate card is better than that card. Uh, Mantis Rider, uh, Lightning Angel, if you're still there, has now, you've seen the door, just get out. Pack up your things, be out by three. You know. Thanks for coming. Uh, so Marty was sent in C. Did you like tokens? I like the the weird sack ability of this. It kind of reminds me a lot of this card. Reminds me of a uh, Legion's Initiative. Yeah, and how I wish Legion's Initiative was pretty good. Uh, their Mardu Charm, however, so I now do like now we've got Flame Slash, Flame Slash plus duress, raise, plus raise the alarm, plus better than raise the alarm because they have first strike the first turn, and the rare instant speed discard. Yes, instant speed pinpoint discard, rare. Yes. Uh, do you like it enough for cube, though? It's very close. I think it's at least going to make a short list. Like, let's say you get to add one card of red, white, black. Butcher or this guy? Butcher. Okay. But this, I think, this is also good. I think, I understand that, like, you can't add a dozen wedge cards. But this is, I like this card. Uh, I think we could, and... I understand you want to be able to block with Lightning Angel. Does that mean that attacking for three on turn four is better than attacking for three on turn three? I don't know. I was never a big fan of Lightning Angel. I'm not a big fan of Mantis Rider either, so... Yeah. me. Uh, but... Mind Swipe. That card gets all the press. Get out of here. That card's 
garbage. Explain to the people at home why this card is garbage, Eck. Because fireballs are bad. And fireballs expensive are counter spells bad. are bad. People love Condescend. Uh, people are just obsessed with anything blue red gold. <laughs> uh, blue red gold has really taken a turn. I mean, I think two years ago, if this card had been printed, it would make the cube. When we were desperate, like in the pre Ravnica days, yeah, we'd take anything. Um, I think like Frostburg beer probably would have been in there. Just like that, <laughs> just desperation. What is a kin tea in kin kin tree? tree invoker? Oh, let's find out. Oh, this? No, this is that now. I think. I think. Wait, hold on. I'll actually read this aloud. For a green and black as a sorcery, you put an XX green and black spirit warrior onto the battlefield where X is the greatest toughness among creatures I control. That is... If we were still running Dorian... Nope. You are correct. If we were running a literal 5-5-3, five, five, I would not go like Wow. Wow. So rude. You... Uh, pony back brigade. Adorable. Ponies. Uh, enters the battle. No, it's not okay. Not even, not even gonna read it? Okay. Uh, Rax Cheshire Death Dealer, uh, fighting with Petrid Leech and Lot Left Troll and a bunch of other stuff in this spot. I guess. I don't think that card's even worth talking about either. Eh, regenerate. Uh, I think Sagu Mahler is the next one I'm even looking at, and that's just because. We hope that there are enough morphs out there to want to play some sweet morph guys. Yeah. And this guy has hexproof and unmorphs. He does a five. very good Simic Sky Swallower impression. Oh, that's a good way of looking at it. I had not, I had not even gone there yet. Yeah. That's he's no progenitor mimic though. Who's kind of holding up that spot? Like, which I think I still want progenitor mimic over that. Progenitor mimic is surprisingly saucy. <laughs> He is, He's a spicy one. He is. He uh, leads to degenerate game states. Exactly. That's a good way of describing it. Exactly. Degenerate game state. Uh, Savage Knuckleblade. If here's my vote for the rug card. Ooh, ooh, really? Well, I mean, not, what's competing with it? Nothing. Exactly. So this card versus Stone or nothing. nothing. Versus uh, well, Guided Passage is really. So good. he has Rootwalla ability attached to him. He, he has. He's a four-four for three. Already good. He has, like, chari like, Chariot Gang or whatever. Root Walla, give it haste, get it back to your hand. This card is very good, obviously going in. This is the rug card. Wow. Uh, of the cards that are on this... Now we're put Into the Dreamer back in? <laughs> come on, man. We're, come on, bro. I like Into the Dreamer. I know, I do, too. But See, come on, bro. Come on. That's the thing, bro. Is, is getting red, white, blue is a lot easier at six mana than it is at three mana. Bro, come on. It's good at six mana. It is. You got all these six abilities six and stuff? Six bro. Bye. Maelstrom Wanderer, how can we even forget Maelstrom Ah, uh, Casey, Casey Ferrari is going to burst through the, kick the door in right now. I love Maelstrom that Maelstrom Wanderer! Uh, Knuckleblade worth considering. I'm going to have to fight it to the death of Maelstrom Wanderer. Though. It's going to win because it's going to deal a lot of damage. It will kill Maelstrom Wanderer before Maelstrom Wanderer can be cast. Just like... I don't really want to natural order in this guy, although I'd totally take a 75 and give all my guys haste. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do I like Siege Rhino? I think it's a fine card. I mean, it's very like, okay, whatever. Like, this isn't the flashiest thing, but it's a 4-5 trample for 4, and it drains, which is not an irrelevant ability. I like this guy. He's not great, but I, I enjoy him. If we still have... Uh, I, I take know. pleasure in, in this card existing. And wow. I, I kind of want to say it. I'm pretty indifferent towards that card. I'm not uh, Soren, terrible. That something happened to poor Soren. Right. I'm, this I, was the, okay. I like your prevailing theory, which is that this was a card that was broken <laughs> late into development, and they made a desperation change to something, and we don't know what, but they did something to it, and now it is actual card. Yeah, I definitely think that Soren Solemn Visitor must have been a good card once. It had to have been. Because now... When it's you... so bad. The only explanation is that it was too good and now they've made it too bad. They went they went wide on it. That's the only explanation. Yeah. It's so much worse than than original Soren for the exact same cost. It's like, you couldn't make a more expensive, like a big Soren or like a little Soren. Uh, so it's just... Anyway. Anyway. Sultai Charm. That is a good charm. That's a good charm. That's a good charm. I think, we're gonna, charm. I think we're going to play that charm. I think that that's the bug... The bug ad. Yes, I think... We got the rug ad, we got the bug ad, for sure. We've got the... Dag I always want to say Dagon. I always want to say Oros. Okay, I, that makes sense. Yeah. For um, a long time, we just named the clans based on there. So, so briefly, we've got Naturalize, 
plus uh, ultimate price plus, plus catalog. catalog. So, That's a bargain. So so you've met the requirement of I need to be able to do something when the board's empty. Draw two, discard one. Yeah. And I can deal with many forms of permanence on this instant, which I'm a big fan of. Yeah. Um, I agree. Age drops are easier to cast than three points. The only people I think this card is god awful which card is it? Oh, Soren. Yeah, we were dead. We were, who's, we're, uh, we're way we've moved on. Uh, Sorek Dragonclaw. A lot of people really like this card. Other creatures you control. If he had Trample, sign me up. A much more interesting. I think a, a long time ago, we were... I don't want big guys that buff my other guys. I want my big guys to be out of their own. We're not near recall. I don't know what that's about. I think anyone who has been saying the same picture. What? Anyway. I think that's a dig at Kenny. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> fight, 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 fight. Um, it's not bad. And you can't say it's bad. I mean, you can say the three color cards are bad. I'll give you that. But the, what it does is not bad. I like Tinker Ascendancy. It, I think this is the best Ascendancy. Like, Fire is plus occasionally drawing you some cards. Like, Garrick's Pack Leader plus Fire's the MMA. That's almost good enough. Um, Fire's is a card that, like, has been in, gets cut, comes back for, like, a cameo, gets cut again. So this is close. I think if this was not in such a restricted mana spot that it would have a better shot, but I can't see playing this over the Knuckle Blade. Which is really what it comes down to at the end of the day. I would not be opposed to adding... If I had... If I think this is, like, the fourth best rug card. Wow. How's it not the third best? It's behind... I, I, I feel it's behind Knuckle Blade, Maelstrom Water, and Intent. Oh, this card's way better than Intent. What? I like Intent. I like Intent, Intent too. Intent's super fun. It's like Mind's Desire, which is like my favorite card. I love Mind's Desire. So anything that's close, I'm a fan. I think it's very adjacent. Which is funny, because I hate Storm and Q. Attacking, with a, attacking with a 6-6, six, six, paying 3. <laughs> and then go, wee! It's not the same as jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jacking it, jacking it. Let's see what the top eight cards in my library are. Uh, Timur Charm, uh, Hunt the Weak, Mana Leak, and Wave of Indifference, kind of. I think you did a pretty good job of summing that one up. That one is definitely in the bottom three charms. This is like bad, good, mediocre. Right, and that's and that, not where you want to be. That's not where you want to be. You want to be at least good, good, mediocre. Uh, Big Vindy. Is this going to make it? Is I, this just I, too boring? I really... Non-land permanent is really... The non-land part. Yeah. Just, I really like this Just get this out of... There we go. And I really yeah, like... Now this card's way better. Yeah. I'm actually going to have to like legitimately work... Look at what's the white-black cards right now. Because I feel like there's a really good balance that we have in there. I like where we're at with white-black. Yeah. We got cards I like. We got yeah, now, like, obvi- not filler. Obviously, this card's not bad. No. Obviously, this card fills me with rage that I can't destroy a land. Right. I can't. We're just kidding. You can even add a separate line. It could be exile target non-land permanent, destroy target land. <laughs> Why not? Or, 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 not additionally, because that would be hilarious. Uh, villainous Wealth, uh, Genesis Wave for your library. Ha ha ha. Way worse than every possible way. Right. It even still costs triple color. Like, you can't <laughs> even get, like, a discount. Um... The Zergo Hell Special. And we're out of the gold card section. It's Altar lightnings. of the Brood. That, I mean, this is, like, a very cheap, like, this is probably going to mill a lot of cards. So, like, in a lot of those combo decks where you, like, make a bunch of permanents that can't necessarily do something. Or something just you, goes, like, up and back. And maybe up. you have a win condition. Yeah. Uh, I think it's pretty good with, like, Avenger as Endicar. It's, it's good in the, uh, the Jeskai Ascendancy combo deck. Have you seen that? No. It, so it's just guy ascendancy, any creature, retraction helix, and like Tormont's crypt, or uh, astral Cornucopia is also inside of the mix. This is non-creature spell, so you play it from zero. Uh-huh. You untap all your guys, you pump, pump, and then you get to loot if you want, and then because of retraction helix, you tap to return the crypt to your hand, and then play it to untap your guy to then loot. So that's the loot. Okay. So you could do with this, build your opponent out. Sure. That's all I got. Whatever. Yeah. We, um, we are right on top of the best artwork in this whole set, though. Cranial Archive? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's. I want to see this foil. Yeah. I want to see this foil. It's going to look sweet. Not good, but foil, I want to see it. Um, that card could make the cube. What? <laughs> yeah. 
You are a high person. Come on, it's a rebuy on your graveyard, or nope. it's get rid of the problems that nope. are okay. You're, I'm, you're just gonna cut me off. All yep. Right. Um, it, uh, the banners, whatever. Uh, Ghost Friday Land. Is, is it funny that the first place I went with this was not Morph, but Affinity? No, a lot of people went there. Okay, because I read that card, I was like, man, that's gonna be good in Affinity, and I was like, oh right, Morph is in this set. Or better yet, like, it's now nowhere in the ballpark of cranial plating, and that deck's already tight. I know. People who talk about that card in construction are dumb as anybody. Who gets access? Uh, the, the winner of the weirdest card in the set. Yeah. What's going on? It's a commander this? card, ladies and gentlemen. I guess. Welcome to opening up that card in packs. Yeah. Oh, Bloodstained Virus is okay. <laughs> right? Okay, whatever. Uh, I like that they have the full cycle of the refuges. At common, so Popper and, and whatnot can play them. And I like that they can come back at any moment because they are all named very reasonable. Right, they, they fixed the whole, you know, blah blah. And there you have. Trilands, Trilands. Oh, Trilands. Trilands. Got it, got Trilands. Again, they're such old news. I know, right? Uh, obvious. Uh, those will be making the cube. Yeah. Uh, we have, you know, over the years with sets being printed, there's a, there's a bit of an imbalance between. Uh, allied color support, enemy color support, because it used to be, and kids, you don't know this, back in the day, allied colors, they could team up, and they could make decks, and their mana was supported. But if you went enemy colors, you had to work really hard at they it. didn't support them because they weren't friends, and you had to find other ways to, to handle it. Uh, yeah, nowadays that, that shit doesn't matter at all. Uh, so. Chip of the Spirit Dragon, not a thing. <laughs> Just in case you're curious. Um, yeah, so... Those are a couple of, we put in the Innistrad, uh, see, I don't even like calling them something, they're so stupid, so. The buddy, buddy lands? Friend, friend, frenemies? Frenemies. They're of the enemy colors, but they are buddies. Yeah, the buddy lands. Czechoslovakian lands. lands. Czech lands, bro lands. Yeah, either way, yeah. that was, uh, that cycle will probably be leading in. Uh, I really like the three color lands, I like, it's a lot of back and forth on those things, just because. They're fine, I mean, they're gonna see play. That's all you really can ask for. They're going to see as much play as the current Trilands do. Right. Which and is non-zero, but not in every deck. Yeah, and they make a what? lot of two-color decks because there's so much overlap, which is one of the right. reasons I really like And there are certain decks where you desperately want any headed fixing, like white-black. So, like, white-black is super stoked with it. It's getting two more dual lands of any variety. Right. So, that's uh, the whole set. We blared through that to make the football game, which we didn't even make kickoff for. I know. But so uh, we will be catching up with that. You guys are lucky at like 529 and just be like, I'm out! And just like, it was real close. Yeah. Uh, Sam's gone, I'm sure. So Yeah. You know I got, yeah, we got uh, to eat something. We got to drink starving. something. I will say that uh, since we've been through this. Do we order so we have to leave the house? <laughs> it's Kenny. You don't know Kenny? Uh, we'll figure it out. Regardless, because this was such an abbreviated version, I would imagine we'll be coming back to this fairly soon. Uh, during the game, I bet we'll probably be debating what cards we actually want to move around, so that when we come back to you in the near future, we'll have a lot more information. We'll have a more solid list. On what cards want to go where. Right about the time the next set is fully split. <laughs> Sooner than that, I promise. So uh, until then, uh, let's go low-scoring affairs, and we'll see you guys later.